What you're about to see are these two brave journalists who have exposed the entire illegal alien route from Ecuador to the United States. In this documentary, you'll learn how the United Nations is executing an industrial-scale weaponized migration program. This eye-opening documentary is a must-see by everyone in America as to what is really going on. I'm sharing this video because America needs to stop being so naive that the government is really trying to do what's best for the American people. What you will see in this eye-opening documentary is that this mass migration is 100% intentional, designed to erase the Republic of America and destroy this country. If you find that this documentary is valuable, definitely go over and support these guys at muckraker.com, either by giving some support or buying some merch. We really need to start supporting these independent journalists because it is these folks that are reporting the real news, not the BS that mainstream media is feeding us. Without further ado, this is the United States invasion route exposed. In 2023, nearly a quarter million illegal aliens entered the United States every month. Nearly all of these illegals followed the same mass migration trail that starts in Quito, Ecuador, and ends at the U.S. southern border. So, we decided to follow the trail ourselves. Along the way, we discovered secret Chinese staging hotels, crossed through the world's deadliest jungle, embedded with an illegal alien caravan, rode the Mexican train of death, and finally, were kidnapped by the Gulf Cartel, just hundreds of feet from the United States border. This video will expose the entire illegal alien pipeline for what it is a United Nations weaponized migration agenda masquerading as an organic humanitarian crisis. This agenda directly benefits cartels and human smugglers, exposes the United States to incredible geopolitical threats, and could potentially usher in permanent one-party rule. Biden! 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 The first stop along the route is Ecuador. U.S.-bound illegal aliens from all over the world first fly into the capital city of Quito due to the country's easy entry requirements. From here, aliens begin making their way towards Colombia. In the Ecuadorian border town of Tolkien, dozens of government and non-government organizations offer aid and instructions on how to navigate the mass migration trail. This map, provided by the United Nations, shows all of the migration-related organizations in Tolkien. Aliens receive aid in the form of legal assistance, food packages, healthcare, maps, and more. Some of this aid is incredibly bizarre. The United Nations International Organization of Migration, IOM for short, hands out pamphlets detailing how to put on a condom. It is clear that the intent of these organizations is to direct the masses of illegal aliens to the United States. Consider this map which shows the route from Colombia to the United States and marks 12 U.S. border crossing points with flags. Many similar maps are distributed by other organizations. This map, distributed by the Red Cross, shows the route from Panama to the United States in painstaking detail. On the back of the map, illegal aliens are encouraged to ride on top of freight trains to reach the United States border. It's worth noting, that these maps direct aliens into incredibly dangerous territory, such as the Darien Gap or cartel-controlled areas of Mexico. If this mass migration program were truly for humanitarian purposes, venturing into such territories would be discouraged. Not only are aliens risking their lives by following these instructions, but the United Nations is indirectly helping organized crime earn untold amounts of money by sending millions of people their way to be smuggled. These same criminal organizations notoriously rape women, rob innocent people, and execute their enemies. After crossing into Colombia from Ecuador, the next stop along the route is the city of Pasto. It was here that we discovered a secret staging point for Chinese illegal aliens headed to the United States. So right now we are in Colombia at the Cabanas Rio Mayo Hotel. And this hotel that we stumbled upon by accident is a major hub, a major transit point meeting place for Chinese foreign nationals that are on their way to the United States. And last night when we were here, we were eating at this hotel restaurant and we were the only uh, foreigners 
that were not Chinese. I mean, the, literally the entire hotel is just Chinese foreigners. Uh, we spoke with the hotel staff here and they confirmed that. And while there are some women and children, it's mostly military aged males. There's some right behind me right now, actually. One thing to note is that among all of the foreign nationals that are entering the United States illegally, the Chinese are among the most well-funded and the most sophisticated in the way they go about getting to the United States. Whereas the Venezuelans, for example, are very poor. They just trek up to the United States on foot in mass caravans. Uh, they don't have much money. Uh, the Chinese are very well funded. They're the ones that are taking planes. This is we're right across the street from an airport right now. And they also have established networks. And this hotel that we're at is proof of that. It's all Chinese and for some reason they all know to come here. It's because they are in direct communication. People that are further up the trail or that have made it to the United States are telling people that are on their way, hey, this is a hotel that's safe for you. Uh, we also found we were staying at this hotel, you know, they're expecting Chinese. You can see a lot of the writings, a lot of the signs in this hotel are written in Chinese. Again, this is further proof that it's not by accident. It's not just some sort of one-off occasion that there's all of these Chinese nationals here at this point. This is a known hub, a known meeting place for Chinese that are in transit on their way to the United States. We spoke with the Chinese national who's staying here right now, who's going to be trekking through the Darien Gap and going up to the United States. His destination is either New York or Los Angeles. And he told us that there are definitively Chinese spies in the United States. Are the Chinese police in the United States? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you worried that the Chinese police can find you in the United States? Yeah. Yeah? I'm afraid. Bian Yi Jin Cha. It is worth noting that this is not the only such hotel along the route. Another Chinese hotel was located in the town of Copper Gana, on the outskirts of the Darien Gap. This hotel was secluded in the woods, away from any busy road. We were only able to snap a quick video of this hotel before the Colombian police told us to stop filming. Our last stop in Colombia was the coastal town of Nicocli. This is one of the last stops for illegal aliens before they enter the Darien Gap. All right, guys, so right now I am in Nicopoli, Colombia. This is a critical staging point where illegals from all over the world converge at. They stop in Nicopoli, they buy various types of equipment here, they buy camping gear, boots, knives, everything else. And there are so many illegal aliens converging on this town daily that a large portion of this town's economy has now been centered around selling these illegal aliens gear in order to uh, cross into the jungle and survive. And even right now, there's people walking around with baskets selling gear to these people. Right here. See? Chaos. La linterna? A cuánto cuesta la linterna? 25. 25? Mm -hmm. Y cuánta cuesta aquí? 5,000. 5,000? Bueno, bueno, bueno. Y para el para teléfono, ¿sí? 5,000. 5,000. Okay, bueno, bueno. And you also have various NGOs that are here as well that are just, you know, giving people basically instructions and uh, whatever other information they might need to make the journey successfully. You can see right here. So, that's Spanish, the OIM is what it says on his vest, that's Spanish for the IOM, the International Organization of Migration. That's the migration arm of the United Nations. You can see here that he was kind of trying to turn away, he didn't really want to be in a camera. Tienes que preguntar primero antes de grabar a las personas, por favor, si. Repite. Ask me. Oh, permission. So, that's what's going on. He's from the OIM. That's the United Nations out here, giving all sorts of aid. Um, and then you have illegal aliens from all over the world that are about to get onto boats and go into the jungle. This is what it looks like. Hey, China, you guys from China? Yes. Hey, Adan, Adan de Vaz. Hey. Adan de Vaz. Estados Unidos, bro. Estados Unidos. Bro. Que país? No, Adan de. Venezuela. Venezuela. Vas Estados Unidos. See? You from Venezuela. Venezuela. You go Amer uh, America. Yeah.
After Nakokli, the next stop along the route is the Darien Gap, the lawless stretch of jungle connecting North and South America, where illegal aliens are frequently raped, robbed, or killed. The Darien Gap has three entry points, Akandi, Copper Gana, and Coreto. Unlike Akandi and Copper Gana, which are in Colombia, Coreto is in Panama. Illegal aliens are required to pay human smugglers for a boat ride in order to access this route. The Akandi and Copper Gana routes, often chosen by poor illegal aliens, are notorious for incidents of violence and fatalities. Treks through these routes can last up to five days and are done without much guided assistance. The Coreto route, though still dangerous, offers a shorter journey of only two days, with guides leading aliens through the jungle. This reduces the risk of criminal encounters, but the added safety and smuggling fee to get from Colombia into Panama by boat make the Coreto route more expensive. This route is preferred by wealthier, special interest aliens, such as the Chinese. Coreto itself is a primitive village, composed of simple huts, and is a community largely disconnected from the modern world. It serves as a landing point and staging place for illegal aliens before they enter the gap. Indian. India. Okay. Welcome, Carreto. Indian. Syria. India. 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 Saludo. Welcome. Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Okay. Bangladesh. India. Indian. Venezuela. Oh, bien. So we're about to depart right now, and we're in our group. There's about 20 to 30 people in each group. This is our group right here. Those are the other groups. And we've just been given a ticket. This is a ticket here. We're about to enter the jungle. <laughs> Into the jungle. We're starting our trek through the Darien Gap. Here we go. Alright, so right now. I'm ringing out all my shit. There are a bunch of streams along the Darien Gap, and they're pretty unavoidable. And the reason you gotta do this is because if you keep your shit wet and you keep walking around in it, you can get trench foot and die. Hours we've been wading through mud like this, and this just shows you how if you're underprepared in your footwear, like we are, I mean, we're wearing $200 hiking boots right now, but this is not the proper foot attire for this type of terrain, and so our feet are absolutely drenched right now, totally <clears throat> soaked with water and mud. And this is how you get trench foot. And your feet basically just start falling apart. And uh, anyway, it just goes to show, people come into this jungle, they don't realize what they're getting themselves into. And then before you know it, you know, they're two days in, three days in, four days in, their feet start falling apart. They can't make it out. And nobody's gonna save them. And they die in their tent.
Okay, so we're like seven hours into the hike so far, and it's very clear how people drop dead in this hike. Right now, we're even taking the easier route from Coreto. If you're taking one of the harder routes from Akandi or Copper Gana, which is like four or five days to get through the jungle, it's so crystal clear how people are just dropping dead left and right. There's mud, there's people backed up. If you get a waterborne illness, if you hurt yourself somehow, there's actually zero way that you're gonna get out of this jungle unless you could somehow pull yourself out, which is just not gonna happen. And then add to that danger, people attacking you, uh, criminals on the route. We've already seen very sketchy people walking by with you know, machetes, we saw a guy with a rifle, people coming up to us asking us about our bags. Extremely dangerous. Children walking by crying, like right here. Um, this is the Trail of Tears. And so, again, we're only seven hours in, people are still fresh. Imagine if you're 17 hours in or 27 hours in, people just start dropping. So that's it, we're gonna keep going. We got a few hours left in the day, and then we're gonna call it. We're inside the Darien Gap. This is day number two. We're just filtering out some water here. Uh, last night was absolutely disgusting. We stayed in a jungle slum, which was just trash and shit and piss. Uh, the most disgusting place you can imagine. With little five by five clearings where people posted up tents uh, so they could just take refuge from the most putrid odors of human excrement and rotting waste. Um, here we are just trying to get enough water to last the day. Um, we're trying to keep this filter on the DL because people walking by us are desperate. They don't have any water of their own. We got people walking up to us asking if they have any water. Uh, I can't sit here and pump water all day for people, so I'm handing them water pills. But there's people right here walking. Hey, amigo. Hey, que país? What country? What country? India. 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 You go America? You go? Yes, yes. Okay, good luck. So there you go. We're in the Darien Gap, day number two. Um, just trying to stay alive. Why do you like Joe Biden? Joe Biden is a nice guy. You see he opened the border for all the countries. Yeah. That's, oh, so they like you like him because of, he opened yeah, the border? because you see there is a poor country around the Maca, so they're just coming to visit and yeah. they, for their job. Okay. <clears throat> We're inside the Darien Gap. It's day two. We're about six or seven hours in on the day. Right now it's pouring rain. Uh, we've been filming. And the guides here, the Embara Indian guides, do not like that I have my camera. We're getting some really unfriendly looks from them. We just started getting them now. Uh, they've been a little bit suspicious of, of us all day, but now they saw me take out my camera and I don't think they like it very much. So um, we're just gonna have to hope for the best. They were telling me that, hey, you. That's one of the guides right there. Actually, we just gotta be careful because these guides do carry weapons on them. They do carry pistols in their bags. And if they wanna do something, I mean, if they wanna rob me or take my camera or do something worse, they could do it with no consequences. So this is where we're at, the Darien Gap jungle, the lawless stretch of land connecting North and South America. <clears throat> and it's probably about three hours until we reach next camp. After illegal aliens exit the Darien Gap and enter Panama, they are transported out of the jungle by Paragua boats and buses and moved into Panamanian refugee camps. Amigos, what country? No, 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 no. no, no, no. 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 What country? No, no. Why, what country? No, no, no. You from Syria? No. I'm so ridiculous. Syria. 
What country are you guys from? Hey, well, why is it a big secret? What's the problem? No. Why not? No. Whoa, what's the problem? No. You guys from Syria? You guys okay? It is here that illegal aliens are processed and given the aid and instructions necessary to continue their journey to the United States. So-called migration route maps can be found everywhere. The same UN-affiliated organizations seen earlier along the route also have a presence inside these Panamanian camps. A few on the scene include OIM, Red Cross, UNICEF, HIAS, European Union, Doctors Without Borders, UNHCR, and the Norwegian Refugee Council. From these camps, illegals are put onto buses and shuttled northward to Costa Rica. From here, illegals ride buses across Nicaragua, Honduras, and Guatemala until they reach the border of Mexico. We travel to the Guatemalan border town of Tecunumán, where human smugglers, most likely affiliated with the Sinaloa cartel, charged us $125 each to be smuggled into Mexico. After crossing into Mexico, we embedded with a massive illegal alien caravan and headed towards Mexico City. The caravan was highly organized. Leaders in the front carried a large banner and a crucifix that read, Contención es mi muerte, containment is my death, a propaganda message implying that not allowing open borders will result in their deaths. The group responsible for organizing this caravan, and many others like it, is Pueblo Sin Fronteras, People Without Borders. The group has released anti-American statements, such as one on November 26, 2018, which said that the United States systematically deprives asylum seekers of their liberty, separates families, and often deports people to their death. Ironically, one of the leaders of Pueblo Sin Fronteras is Irenio Mujica, a United States citizen. The group has also received the support of radical left extremists, who have helped fundraise for the organization. So this morning we left Palomares, Mexico, and we're walking towards San Martin with a massive caravan behind us. There's about 2,000 people in this group, and uh, we've been walking for about four hours. We have at least that much more time before we get to the destination. Okay, país eres tú? Salvador! Honduras! Honduras! Salvador! Aquí están todos los países. Aquí viene de todo, cubano. Venezolano, Nicaragüense, Honduras, Guatemala, Colombia, Cuba. ¿Por qué todos le gusta el presidente Biden? ¿Por qué? Biden es un presidente que ayuda mucho al inmigrante. Es un futuro mejor Biden. Biden por todos. Sí. No, pero por por qué los migrantes le gusta Biden? Es es un mejor presidente de Trump. Tu opinión de Trump. Trump no sirve. Trump no quiere a los emigrantes. Okay. Trump es un inmigrante y detesta los inmigrantes. In your opinion, President Biden ayuda migrantes mucho o no? Sí. So, so in your opinion, your opinion de Biden es buen, bueno o no bueno? Los los migrantes de Venezuela y otros países te gusta President Biden o? 
funcionen otra vez de nuevo. Sí. Sí, pero hay una gente todavía. Ok, en tu opinión, tu opinión de presidente Trump. No, no. No. No quiere a los migrantes, no nos quiere. No, no te gusta Trump. No, no quiere a los migrantes. No. Ah, uh, y, ok, ok. Y la elección uh, en uh, 2024 es posible Biden y Trump. ¿Sí? Van a ser como complicantes son ellos, pero Biden va para adelante otra vez. Tiene que ganar, porque ha ayudado mucho y Dios tiene que bendecirlo. Ajá. So, so, so todos los migrantes, uh, ¿cómo se dice? ¿Cómo, se, ¿Cómo todos los migrantes apoyen al presidente Biden en la elección? Sí. After Mexico City, we traveled to Irapuato. It is here that the NGO Amigos del Tren distributes train route maps and aids illegal aliens in riding the train of death, also known as the beast train. At around 1 a.m., conductors intentionally stop the train about one mile from the NGO, and cartel members assist in the boarding process. Okay, so we're sitting right now at the side of the train tracks. A couple more hours, we're on the train, and I am coming down with something nasty. I've been feeling pretty sick for the last 24, 48 hours itch ish, and now it's just starting to hit me like a ton of bricks, but we're gonna push through. Uh, all around us, we have uh, illegal aliens who are gonna get on the train with us. Hey, que país, amigo? Guatemala. 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 Si? Sí? Guatemala. Guatemala. Colombia. 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 See, there's more people showing up here. <clears throat> anyway. That's the situation out here, so another hour or two, we're on the train, and we're going north. Back on. Go, go, go. Where you going? Shit. You ready? What are you doing? He's going to go that way. Josh, whatever you do, just take, just watch your feet, don't fall. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Oh my god. That was so fucking scary. Yeah, wakey. 
Migrantes prefiere presidente Biden o presidente Trump? Biden. Biden. Personas no no le gusta presidente Trump. No. Biden. Huh? Biden. Biden. Sí. Wait, ¿por, qué, por, qué, ¿Por qué Biden y no Trump? Porque Trump es malo. Porque Trump, Trump no quiere mirar. Es como Maduro. Trump es como Maduro. Okay, so right now we're standing outside the train of death. We are just on the outskirts of the city of Lyon. And what's happened is our train has broken down. We're all standing outside of the train now. Something apparently happened to the conductor. And we have no idea if we're going to be stuck here for an hour or 10 hours or a day or multiple days. So... We're going to start walking, and this territory is controlled by criminal elements, and we're not too sure what's going to happen. We start walking here, but we're making the executive call to just go for it. After we made it to the city of Lyon, we took a bus to the border town of Matamoros, and then took a taxi to Playa Baghdad. It was here that we began the final part of our journey, crossing into the United States. Okay, so right now we are at Playa Baghdad. This is south of Boca del Rio Bravo, which is gonna be the place from which we attempt to cross into the United States. Uh, you can see the weather today is absolutely nasty. It's been storming and raining out, so we just gotta hope that we don't run into some sort of rip current or lose our bags in the process here. We're gonna be walking a few miles, maybe more, down this beach in order to get there and hopefully we don't get picked up by human smugglers along the way. As you know, Anthony uh, and Josh's brother from muckraker.com got kidnapped yesterday. They were stopped by members of the Mexican drug cartel because in this area of the U.S.-Mexico border, it's the cartel who rules, not America. Earlier this week, the, you were kidnapped, I understand, at gunpoint by the Gulf cartel. Uh, you and I believe your brother, correct, were allegedly bounded, blindfolded, and forced to sit on your knees. This all happened by the Rio Grande. At one point, you were kidnapped. Correct. You were taken hostage. You were blindfolded. Yep. Tell us about that event. That must have scared the shit out of you. A few weeks ago, you got kidnapped on your way back up to Texas. That's correct. So, you know, after riding the so-called beast train and abetting with a massive caravan of these people... Uh, we were going to cross into the United States. The area that we decided to cross, though, um, is right across the river from Boca Chica, Texas. And that's where Elon Musk's SpaceX is. And there were numerous reasons why we chose uh, chose that location. I mean, we could have crossed in, in countless other areas for sure, but we chose that location, number one, because that would be incredible if we could show that right across from this critical spaceport, you could just cross right into the United States. And then we also figured, okay, we're walking up a public Mexican beach. You know, Elon Musk, SpaceX is right there. Surely if there's any point that we were just going to walk across, this seems like it would be a relatively safe spot. Uh, completely incorrect, actually. So we start walking up this beach. It's called Playa Baghdad. That's basically the last road that you can stop at before you have to just walk up coastline all the way up to the Rio Grande, where that spits out to the Gulf of Mexico. We are walking up this beach, we being my brother Joshua Rubin and I, as we're walking up this beach, a truck stops us. And they basically say, hey, listen, get in the truck right now, okay? We're going to take you back to where you came from. We're going to forget this ever happened, and you're going to go on your merry way. In hindsight, that was my warning. I should have got in the truck and done it. But for numerous reasons, I was not going to do that, of course. And number one is just safety. I'm not just going to get in your truck. Number two was I have to complete the mission. Basically, I said, no, I'm not getting in your truck. I don't know who you are. And, you know, I have to get I have to get to the, the river. I just told him I was a photographer trying to take photos, right? They call up some supposed buddy of theirs who's down there by the river. And they say, hey, listen, I call my buddy. You now have to get in the truck with us. There is no choice. Um, because if you walk down there by yourself, it's going to be trouble for you. At this point, I really got no choice. We get in the car. We start driving north. Again, now we're headed towards the United States. Now, at this point, we're literally a couple hundred feet from the U.S. border. This man that they had called on the phone gets in the car, 
And as soon as this guy got in the car and I could see who he was, I was like, oh, this is not a guy I want to be with. Like, this is getting, <laughs> this is getting bad. Like, yeah. This situation is solely not in my control. They whip the car around. They start driving down south. This man who got in the car gets on the phone with the woman. They start rambling in Spanish. I don't really know what they're saying. Puts me on the phone with her, and the lady says, listen, I don't know, like, what you're doing, but um, you're supposed to pay $500 to cross in this area. I didn't say I was trying to cross. They just inferred that. And she says, it should matter, like, bluntly. She wasn't, like, trying to tell me I was going to be a kid. Just bluntly. She's like, you're in the hands of the cartel. Uh, you didn't pay them, so and, and now you are being taken by them. You're going to be handed off to a group of armed men. As we're driving inland, something interesting happens. I'm actually filming them secretly on my phone. Had they caught me doing that, I, I could have been I could have been killed. We drive about 10 minutes inland. We unpack our bags, and they they see our camera gear, and they see the drone, and they start flipping out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they start yeah. bugging. They're like, what is going on here? Um, then they start searching through all of our all of our data. They search through my phone, and I'm worried this whole time. Like they're gonna find that video of me that I took of them, and they're gonna. They're, I don't even know what they're gonna do. But I guess I don't. I just don't think he saw it. They put us on our knees, take hostage type photos. They accuse us of being intelligence or military guys. They're checking us for wires. Yeah, going through every bit of our bag. Another truck now has pulled up with four more armed men. So they took my brother. They got him pinned up against the truck. And um, you know, I'm thinking this. This if these people think that we're somehow intelligence guys or you know. Military, I mean, we could have a bullet put on our head straight up. And at one point, one of these men points to my drone and holds a pistol to his head. I'm taking this as a death threat. They end up tying up our hands. They throw a blindfold on me. They didn't have one for my brother, so they just pull the hood over his head of this jacket that he was wearing, throw us in the back of the truck, and basically say, you know, like, you're now we're, you're part of an investigation. We're going to see El Jefe. I'm like, hey, you know, how much money do you guys want? You know, what do you want? We'll go to ATM right now, we'll pull it out, and they, they won't have it. They're like, no. They're like, we're going to see the boss, El Jefe. I don't know where we're going. I'm blindfolded. My brother's got his head down with a hood over his head. As we're driving throughout Mexico, they're deeper into Mexico. They're making stops. People walking up to the truck, whispering about us, saying, you know, intelligentsia or, or, or military. You know, they're, they're, they're smoking pot in the car, they're making more stops, driving down dirt roads. And as we're doing this, I'm actually whispering to my brother. I'm like, man, if you can, start loosening up your hand straps because I don't know if we're just going to have one opportunity to make a go at it before they execute us. I mean, I, you know, I had no idea what was going to happen. And then eventually... After driving all down all these dirt roads, the doors open up and the, the blindfold comes off and uh, they tell us to get out of the car. We're in the middle of an abandoned field. I mean, literally, I thought they, they might kill us right here, but that's not what happened. They, they took all of our electronic gear. They laid it out in front of us. Uh, they, they pull out a crowbar. They smash all of our gear to little bits and pieces. I mean, they were literally bits and pieces on the ground and they smashed the bits and pieces. And... Um, they, and then that was it. And then they, they loaded us into a truck and they dropped us off at the port of entry. Basically tell us not to come back ever again. The United States is in a state of undeclared war. The United Nations and associated organizations are actively working to dissolve the American Republic through an industrial scale weaponized migration program. Narco terrorist cartel organizations control the entire US Southern border. And every day, Thousands of unknown military-aged men from around the world infiltrate America. At this point, there are undoubtedly terrorists, saboteurs, spies, and other nefarious actors embedded in America, with many more on the way. There is also an ever-increasing threat of the establishment of a permanent one-party state. As you have just seen, the majority of these illegals support the Biden regime. The harsh reality of this invasion can no longer be ignored, and its effects will only grow worse over the years to come. Schools, which once served to educate the next generation of Americans, now serve as illegal alien shelters. Every night, thousands of veterans sleep homeless in the streets, while illegal aliens, who have contributed nothing to America, sleep in hotel rooms for free. Major American cities are watering down the votes of law-abiding, tax-paying citizens by granting suffrage to illegal aliens. This new voter base has already shown blatant disrespect for the laws of the United States by entering the country illegally. In some states, illegals will begin policing American citizens, and some members of Congress have openly suggested the idea of having illegals serve in the military in exchange for citizenship. This is replacement migration. The United Nations wrote a white paper about this phenomenon in 2000, titled Replacement Migration. Is it a solution to declining and aging populations? The paper proposes mass migration as a means to offset aging populations in Europe, the United States, Russia, Japan, and Korea. The white paper offers five possible scenarios for the United States. 
Shockingly, Scenario 5 suggests it would be necessary to have 593 million immigrants from 1995 to 2050, an average of 10.8 million per year. By 2050, out of a United States total population of 1.1 billion, 775 million, or 73%, would be post-1995 immigrants or their descendants. The American Republic is on the verge of extinction. If you are an American, the onus is on you to stand up, speak out, and fight back against this agenda. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support our operation, you can make a one-time contribution at muckraker.com slash donate, or you can pick up some merchandise at shop.muckraker.com. If you don't want to do that, you can support our operation by sharing the information that we publish. And if you don't want to do that, all I ask is that you have the courage to stand up and speak the truth. I quote the great American John Adams when I say, always stand on principle, even if you stand alone. Thank you very much.